Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk Legacy. My name is Noah Mitchell, and I'm the Senior Learning Experience Designer here at Legacy FM. So today, I want to talk about the work from home transition. In my case, this was going from a really active job as a server waiting tables to sitting at my desk eight hours a day like a dungeon dweller and really having to overcome some obstacles that come with that work from home situation. So that's what we'll talk about here. I really just want to focus on a couple of the mental aspects and the physical aspects of it, and then what kinds of techniques you can use to circumvent those obstacles. Now, the advice I give, it's not going to be the same for everybody, but my hope is that just by watching this, it'll resonate with a few of you and help a few of you along the way, right? So I also want to start with just stating that work from home is amazing. Even though there are a lot of challenges that come with it, for me, the pros vastly outweigh the cons. And the biggest one there is the flexibility. I have the flexibility to take my daughter to school every day, pick her up from school every day, uh, eat lunch with her, do, do more things with her. And I wouldn't trade that for the world. And then on the other side of that, I have the flexibility to work wherever I want to, right? As long as I'm not recording videos like this or recording voiceover narration for e-learning courses. So it's great, right? Um, just wanted to get that out of the way. So let's focus on a couple of the challenges. Now, when I started my work from home position, I was really in a new domain. I'd never been an instructional designer before in a professional capacity. And so here I was not only trying to learn how to do what I do as best as I can and trying to be Mr. Perfect, which, as we all know, is not not possible. Um, I was also, you know, in my chair eight hours a day, as I mentioned, and that really started to take its toll on me after a while. And part of that was because I just didn't feel comfortable. I probably just didn't really know that I could go work somewhere else. Um, so mentally, uh, even though I struggle from anxiety now, my anxiety was just maxed out. And there were several moments where I questioned myself. I questioned my ability and whether or not I needed to stay in instructional design um, just for my my sanity, just for my mental health. Um, so how I got around that was just realizing that I don't have to be in my office 100 percent of the time unless it's it's some task that requires me to be in the office. Right. Um, I can work wherever I want to. That's one of the great benefits of work from home. and so. That's my first piece of advice to you is to change your work setting. And research shows us that that is actually effective. Changing the place where you work or study, it really refreshes your mind. It gives you, you, gives you your focus back. It gives you your motivation back. So there are one of two ways you can do that. You could either find separate spaces in your home to work if that's possible for you. So maybe one week you're working in the office, the other in the dining room, the other week out on the patio on a beautiful day, what have you. And so just changing up that space every so often, it's going to recharge you. Um, and I think it'll really make a difference if you're not already doing it right. For me, that's a little harder to do. I can't really there aren't any other spaces right now in my home where I can work uh, without more distraction. We have a lot of people living in my home. So um, so I started going to local coffee shops and that was great. So it gave me the same effect. And for me, because I'm a little more social anyway, just being around other people sort of working and that hustle and bustle, it, it worked great to like lower my stress and anxiety. Um, so, so that's what I did. Now I'm going to stay at the coffee shop. We'll move on to some of the physical issues. So for me, sitting down all day long was not good and it hasn't been I actually way more now than I ever have. And so that's, that's affected me in a lot of ways. I feel tired a lot more now. My mental acuity is probably not as good as it should be. Um, I just, you know, don't have as much energy. So I'm trying to change that. And so one way that I'm, I'm changing that you know, if I'm at the coffee shop, you'll notice at a lot of coffee shops, they have these tables that are about bar height. Right. And um, if you've been to a Starbucks, you know what I'm talking about. There are these tables that come up, at least to me, around the abdomen and just they allow you to stand and do your work. And that's exactly what I do. So instead of sitting down all the time, I can cycle standing up, doing work for an hour and then sitting down for a little bit, standing back up and working. And so standing up actually burns more calories than sitting down. So you, you're 
exercising in a sense. And it's not like you're having to go on a run or a jog or anything like that. It's just a small step that you can take to improve your um, overall fitness and just energy levels, really. Now, it's important to note that you should sit down a little bit. You shouldn't stand the whole time. Um, science shows that that's not necessarily good for you either. Scientists should totally tell servers that, but uh, that's neither here nor there. So just make sure that you're sort of cycling that, okay? Now, um, one of the other things that I started doing, and this was at the coffee shop as well, um, because I started feeling so good that I was you know, standing up and that was improving my mood and my overall uh, physical um, feeling. I also felt more motivated to go out and walk around, which I know I should do that here in my neighborhood. And I do now a little bit, uh, but it was just different being there in that place. I had more motivation to do it. So that's the next thing that you can do to sort of mitigate the physical challenges of work from home is to go on a walk or just take breaks, right? Any, any work tech or any work schedule that you have, you need to have breaks programmed in, in some way. So you can watch our other video on the Pomodoro technique. That's one technique that I use personally. You take you, you work intensely for 25 minutes and you take a five minute break. Once you cycle that four times, you take a longer break of 15 minutes. And then those breaks, you get away and you do something active maybe, or just anything to refresh. Maybe if you need to mentally recharge, go do something for that. Physically, go do something for that. Um, and then there's another technique called the 5217 technique, where you would work for 52 minutes more or less intently, and then take a 17 or you know 15 minute break, something like that. So when you think about it, it doesn't seem like much, but let's take the 5217. You're working 52 minutes and then you take a 17 minute break. Go walk for that whole time. You don't have to go fast. Just walk and enjoy life. Enjoy however the day is. Right. If you do that twice, just two times a day, you only have to take two breaks for that. Right. Um, that's 30 minutes that you've gone and walked and exercised. And in my case, it was 30 minutes of walking exercise that I wouldn't have gotten sitting in my dungeon of an office in the chair. Right. So um, those are some of the things that that I've done to mitigate the challenges of work from home. I'm sure you all have some other ones. So feel free to throw those in the comments below here on LinkedIn. And if you want to talk about this more, maybe you've got some more unique challenges and you'd like some advice. I'd be glad to try and help out. So feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, yeah, hope, hope it helps. Uh, that's all I've got for you today, though. So you all take it easy. See you next time.